Good evening, anybody that's out there watching. And if you're watching this on Facebook after the, or YouTube after the fact, then thank you for watching. I'm going to be tying a fly tonight that is a sort of an kind of an egg pattern, but it's also um, kind of imitates like power bait for flies. Um, in Tennessee at the dam, when you actually is Norris Dam, um, if you fished out there, you could fish with a treble hook and you could use power bait. Uh, it would be actually like a jar like this. Uh, this is a kind of a brighter, this is a corn color. Or you could use like a fluorescent green. Um, this is a little bit darker, but something similar to this. Or you could use pink. Uh, this has sparkles in it. Um, so you could take those, you could blend them together and make two colors. Um, a lot of ways you could do it. But um, that was for fishing with a um, <clears throat> uh, spinning rod. So... You could do that or you could use a fly um, and sometimes you needed to use something that looked like power bait because that's what they were eating. Um, they just wouldn't touch anything else. Most of the time you're on a zebra midge but sometimes you needed something like that. So I thought that I would uh, tie a fly that I used one time and actually caught one of my biggest trout on. Um, it's just a, a fluorescent yellow egg pattern so I'll switch it around. It's a quick, uh, quick tie and I'll get it knocked out. So this is a very small pattern, I'm sorry, a very small hook. This is a number 10 mosquito hook is what I'm using on this. But basically any hook around this size, um, I like this one because it's pretty thin. It's a pretty small hook, as you can see based on the size of my thumb. Um, so I'm going to use... Uh, you can use yellow white thread if you have the thread that matches um, the egg pattern that's even better I don't have a color like that so I just pick the one that's kind of closest and the stuff that I'm gonna make the body with is this fluorescent yellow it's kind of like yarn but if you pull on it it comes apart pretty easily so it kind of stretches and gives uh, but you build it up and you make a kind of a fluffy <clears throat> body out of it and in the water it kind of looks like an egg sack so um, anyway let's get started it's gonna be a quick tie uh, got the yellow on my holder here I'm just gonna start like normal by covering the hook the shank of the hook you could actually do this without doing too much coverage here in fact, that might even be too much, but get the idea. Trim that off. Um, really, really simple. Uh, just now that I've got that there, I'm going to cover up that little tag in to make sure it's smooth. Go back to the middle of my thread here, kind of in the middle. And I'm just going to take my yarn. This egg dubbing. I don't have the package for this stuff anymore. I wish I did so I could show you but it's pretty simple. Like I said, you just go over this a couple of times. Like that. And keep it on top of the hook. And I'm going to cut it. Ooh, got the dull scissors. There. Can't use these other ones. These are dull. I cut, cut a bead chain with those things and now they're super dull. Okay. I seem to be having a hard time with my feed. I, I got a new got a new modem and it's, it doesn't seem to be helping. Because it's going in and out of connection. So pull that down, go over it again. turns can I go 
beside it here. This is kind of the same way you would build up uh, if you were doing like a deer hair pattern and you were wrapping it on the hook. Uh, when you pull on it, it fluffs up. Okay, I think that's going to be enough. Got on that one, and they're like four times. As you can see, when you cut it, it gets really fluffy. Uncover this head here, pull that back. I'm work my way forward on the hook so I can tie it off. over and get a little nail polish here. I want to get it all up in that in that yarn but I do want to um, get it on the threads down there so they're nice and clean nice and um, attached nice and solid. And now I'm just going to shape this into a ball. Um, it's basically what you do. So got these curved scissors. These are just regular scissors from um, I think I got these at Walmart. But you can get these at like at Joann's or somewhere like that. They come in a three pack. Why they make these things so tiny, I don't know. But uh, I've got like the smallest pair of scissors I've ever owned came in that pack also they're very tiny but uh, anyway they're good sharp scissors and well, they used to be sharp I'm just gonna kind of form this uh, these trout oftentimes when they're farm raised they're fed with um, some kind of a feed ball of some kind uh, and when they first go in, they don't know to eat bugs, really. They eat the first thing they see that looks like their food. And this is obviously a really big clump of this fuzz. We're making it as round as possible. And this is really fluffy, so it's kind of hard to tell if it's round or not. Because you cut it, like when you cut hair, um, you kind of go one way with it and you go the other way and make sure that there's no bits sticking out. Curve it down here a little bit. And when you set this stuff up, when you set the the power bait up, you put treble hook on and then you put the power bait over the treble hook and you sink it in so that you can't really see the treble hook at all. They come up and they eat it and then when they try to swim off with it in their stomach, then the hook comes out and then you got them. So, and the trout are really smart. They can, they're pretty good at getting that stuff off the hook. And so it's good on these things to try to make them so you can't really see the hook when it's floating around. And another good thing, this is not something that, um, well, some, a lot, most fly fishermen um, won't use any kind of bait other than the fly. 
but there is some stuff that Powerbait makes that is a kind of a gel or a sauce that you can put on your lures that smells and tastes like Powerbait. And so you can actually put that, uh, you can put that on this fly, get it down in that fuzz, and then when it goes down in there, it smells, it tastes like power bait or garlic or whatever. You could soak it in a, make your own sauce if you wanted to, make a garlic sauce or salt or whatever, get it in there. Uh, but that's basically the fly. Uh, you can barely see the hook under there. For the most part, it's floating and you can't see any of that, but it gives, obviously it's super fluffy, so when, it, when they bite down, you can still have access to the hook. Um, and another thing you can do, uh, if you want to make this ball a lot smaller, you can do that and you can put a bead on here. Um, that makes it a little bit flashier. You can also mix in dubbing. If you have some flash dubbing, uh, you can mix into this. Although this stuff is a little bit flashy because it's made of plastic or whatever it's made of. Um, and then the th a third thing you can do to make it look better is you can add some marabou, some white marabou out the back. Um, sometimes these eggs have kind of a kind of a casing around them. Uh, so I'm going into my wonderland under here, my messy desk. Uh, I don't have any marabou handy. But if you make that marabou come out and be kind of fluffy around there, uh, that can help. Um, and there's also kind of a netting, something or other, that can go over that that looks like an egg sac. Um, so they got this stuff in all the different colors, uh, fluorescence, um, things that attract fish. Um, but I literally, I caught my biggest, biggest trout that I've ever caught was on one of these guys. Um, I had it set up just like you would set up power bait, but on a fly rod, uh, with a sinker and, and, um, I was using some kind of a foam hopper to, use as an indicator and that indicator you know would float up and then the weight would be down below and this this egg um, this egg fly would be down in the water and the fish came by and it just happened to be a good time to use that kind of bait but it was a uh, it wasn't a huge fish but it was the biggest one I've caught as far as trout go so uh, oh yeah in fact See if I can get this on the picture here. This. That's a picture of the trout. That was the only one I caught in Tennessee. That was the only one I caught in Tennessee that was a... Uh, not a keeper. It was in the... They call it the... I don't remember what they call it. There's a, 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 a length range from 14 inches to 20 inches uh, that you couldn't keep those those fish. You could keep them below that and you could keep them above it, but you couldn't keep that range. So anyway, uh, I'm looking not at the camera. There's the camera. So uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. It was a short little video. Thank you for watching. Um, if you ever want to try it, uh, it's pretty simple to get the stuff to tie. And it's a good, I, mean, I enjoy it. It's a good hobby. Um, I've tied a bunch of flies. And uh, this was, I think this was actually my, not including my singing video that's on my channel. This is the 40th video, the 40th fly that I've tied on video. So I'll be posting this to my YouTube account. If you want to see that on YouTube instead of uh, just Facebook, you can go to quietman Twenty Eight on my YouTube channel and you can see the flies that I've tied and you can also see one video of me singing um, in the opera Pagliacci uh, where I play clown and I played Beppe and so I have a little kind of an aria song in the play in the the comedy that's within the opera it's not really a play anyway thank you for watching um, and have a good night